All right, so as I said, I will start briefly with a short presentation of our campus, and then um, I'll pass the word to uh, Josie. Just give me a second. All right, so if um, you have any questions, by the way, during the presentation, please feel free to add your questions in the questions and answers section. Um, Lancaster University Leipzig is an official branch campus of Lancaster University, and we established our campus here in Germany in 2019 and started operating uh, with our foundation entry in 2020. Uh, last year, we had, a, had our first graduates, uh, which we are very happy about. Um, and at the moment, we offer here um, bachelor's and master's programs. We offer um, software engineering, computer science, accounting and finance, business management, business management with business analytics, business management with accounting and finance, and business management and media. Uh, we offer uh, master's of data science, of cybersecurity, logistics and supply chain management, and master's of management. We also offer offer foundation entries uh, in computer science and business uh, and uh, pre-masters in computer science and um, computer in business management and computer science, sorry, uh, for those students who do not meet our direct uh, requirements. At the moment, we have more than 400 students on campus and more than 90 nationalities represented, which we are very happy and proud about. Uh, we, of course, use Lancaster University's global reputation, and Lancaster University was ranked 122nd in the latest QS World Rankings and is constantly among top 15 UK universities. We are a research university, um, and soon we are going also to introduce um, a few uh, positions for our PhD students. Um, let me briefly tell, tell you a couple of benefits of studying with us here in Leipzig, um, which are relevant to our careers and um, engagement. For example, our students um, can uh, go and study in the UK, uh, in our main campus in the UK, uh, for their entire second year. Uh, they just need to apply uh, during their first year of uh, degree program for this opportunity, and depending on their performance in their first year of their degree study, uh, they can qualify and um, spend this study abroad here in our Lancaster University main campus in the UK paying lower fees associated with our German campus, which is very exciting. Um, secondly, we offer free basic German language uh, course here on campus, uh, and we really encourage our students to learn German um, if they come from very different backgrounds because this will develop their uh, competency on the job market later. Of course, this is not a requirement. It's uh, up to you, but you should know that we offer this elementary level for free. And then for um, extra tuition, you can sign up for uh, more language courses here on campus. And I think that's it from my presentation, actually, and I'm happy to pass it to Josie. Um, I will stop sharing my screen now, um, and I will switch, uh, mute myself, and we'll be happy to answer uh, the questions if you have any during Josie's presentation. Thank you very much. So, oh, hello. Um... I'm taking over then. <clears throat> I'm going to share my screen as well with you. Okay, just one sec. Hope you can see it, but I guess you can. Um, so yeah, uh, welcome again. I, as mentioned before, I'm the career and engagement manager here at LU Leipzig, and I will, um, of course, talk about the um, career opportunities that Leipzig has to offer to you and a bit about my role on campus and before we then hand over to our students. So um, Leipzig is a great place to work, definitely, and to live. So I'm originally from here and I can tell you that the place has really transformed 
in the last uh, definitely 20 years. It is the fastest growing city in Germany. It's very young, it's very vibrant. There's so much going on in terms of culture and music and art and parks and so much to do. Um, but also on top of that, you can also have a lot of economic opportunities here in Leipzig. There are many jobs going. Um, we have very interesting um, industries here like automotive, but also um, biotech, IT, um, is a very big branch here in Leipzig. So there's many jobs on offer. There are many um, also investment projects going on, a lot of them around the city. At the moment, very big um, investment projects in the north of the city. So for example, um, Drexelmeier and also Bayersdorf, you might know them, um, have settled down there recently. But there's, of course, as you also probably know, there's Porsche in Leipzig, BMW, Amazon are kind of the, the flagships. But just um, IT companies, there are like a thousand IT companies in Leipzig um, alone. So um, yeah, it's also very vibrant in terms of startup scene. A lot of companies are founded in Leipzig. There are many um, work spaces, incubation hubs. So if you're planning on founding your own business, starting your own company, this is also a great place to be. Um, so just going a little bit more into the, the clusters we have here, as mentioned before, we have a very, very big um, transportation hub here in Leipzig. Uh, DHL is here, of course, as well. Um, I think it's, yeah, it's the largest um, DHL hub in, in Europe. We are the biggest, Saxony is the biggest um, IT cluster in, um, in Europe and the fifth uh, global globally. So it's, it's a lot of um, prospects also in Leipzig, but also in Dresden. Um, there's an hour away from here, microchip companies and so on. So especially for in the IT sector, there is um, a lot of opportunities. Then, um, so yeah, as mentioned before, we have IT, digital technologies are um, a big industry in the region. Also e-commerce and logistics for those of you who's planning on studying logistics or management, um, supply chain, um, yeah, with Amazon and DHL in Leipzig, and also media and creative is very strong in Leipzig with um, broadcasting, with the fair we have in Leipzig. So yeah, many, many different opportunities. Uh, just in numbers again, so what, what does this mean in numbers? How many companies are there? Um, how many employees are in these different industries and what is the turnaround. So you can see this in numbers again. Uh, so this is me with uh, two of our students. I think they're now third year students, so they're about to graduate. You can actually see Juan on the picture who is working already um, in a company called Unite. They're an e-commerce company, so just as one example of many of our students who are already working during their studies, um, which of course prepares them for their um, work, work life after they graduate and also yeah, offers them a better start to, the, yeah, to their career, so to speak. Um, so what I offer on campus is of course, I offer one-to-one -one guidance. Um, we have a lot of different uh, skill building workshops on campus. So this is with me. I, of course, focus on career. So, for example, CV writing, but also how to build a professional network, for example, or um, uh, what's the other example? Yeah, professional relationships, exactly. So, yeah, lots of different workshops for careers, but also um, for academic writing. We also have activities um, for, for soft skill building. So there, there are different activities going on. Um, then what else do I do? So I organize career fairs. So we typically have one or two career fairs um, in the year that bring our students in direct contact with, um, with employers. So sorry, I just see there's a question here. Um, Josie, hi. I'm going to reply these questions uh, okay. in written, okay. the Thank ones you. which are relevant to our presentation, which are not, will be following up later. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay, great. So yeah, as I said, um, career fair. So we had uh, great companies here um, on, on campus already, uh, like Spread Group, for example, is a, is a local company to hear they, one of these companies directly employed students um, after graduation. 
Um, so the career fair is a very, very popular format for companies, but also for our students to get in direct contact with each other. Then, yeah, we have meetups and startup safaris, hackathons. Um, we organize for our students on campus, or they can also go to external ones in one of the many co-working spaces. And that brings them more into contact with the local startup community. And um, what I also do is, for example, I help our academics with the master, master thesis and bachelor thesis projects. So now our master students, for example, they are writing their bachelor thesis with companies like um, one called Size. Uh, so, so all these sort of things that are um, sort of evolve around career, but also more practical projects is what I support our academics, but also first and foremost our students with. Um, so yeah, of course, important to mention that we have um, a very good company network. So we have um, several memberships that help us, of course, build this outreach and community in the industry locally and also nationally. But we also have on top of that very strong um, interactions and contact with companies like PwC, you probably know EY is one of our partners. Um, Rode and Schwarz, we have several students working for them, and Spread Group or Spreadshirt, usually uh, used to be Spreadshirt, now it's Spread Group. They're a very big um, print on demand company. One of our alumni is now working for them, for example. So we have very strong bonds with um, companies that are yeah, based locally, but also work globally. Um, just on this on this note, again, as um, Elvira had mentioned before, these companies are English speaking and they do employ international talent, but it's very advantageous to learn German and you can do that here on campus. But this is a message we really, really stress that if you want to have a very successful career in Germany, it's very advantageous to learn German, but also to immerse yourself in the culture here, to be part of a community and um, to also get this very important um, work experience during your studies. Because a working student position or an internship will really help you getting ahead with your career after you graduate. We have a job platform just to mention that now, so you know all of our um, career activities are managed through that. You can book appointments with me, you can find um, jobs on there also career fairs and other um, skill building workshops, as mentioned before, you can find on there and, and book yourself a slot, so uh, a place. So you, yeah, it's called Job Teaser. It's free of charge, of course. And um, so we work with that. Just another more concrete example of our uh, career development events. As mentioned, um, career workshops, we do company tours. So our students have visited DHL, for example. We did a company tour to Spread Group. Um, students themselves have organized a company tour to Porsche. So this really enriches your student life. Um, this is an example of our la latest career fair in March. There will be another one in November that will definitely be taking place. And again, it's very valuable for companies and our students. We offer the, the language courses on, on campus, you can really, if you were here for three or four years, you can really advance to B2 level um, in German, which will really help you have a successful career in Germany. And we also have very frequently a company guest speakers on campus and in seminars and workshops that give you more practical industry related insights on, yeah, on your subject of study. We also have roles that you can take up on campus. They will help you with your career. Uh, for example, you can be a class representative, a student ambassador, which basically you would be promoting the university, um, answer questions to pr prospective students or organize events um, within the social committee. So this will also give you good um, soft skills and transferable skills that you can use later on when you're applying for jobs. Of course, I wouldn't be telling you all of this if you couldn't be working either during your studies or after your studies. This is definitely possible just to give you an insight of what is um, what is doable. So outside during your term time, you can work up to 20 hours per week. 
Um, the minimum wage is um, 12 euro per hour. Typically, our students earn 14 to 15 euro um, as a working student. And outside of term time, you can work um, 40 hours per week. So for example, during the summer break, this is a very typical time when students work full time, earn good money, get good work experience. And so yeah, and all of our students, once they graduate successfully, are entitled to an 18 month post-study um, residence permit. So this will give you enough time to find a job. You don't have to have a job after graduation in order to get this, this residence permit. But after these 18 months, if you then have a job, you can then definitely stay for another five years um, and apply for that. So this would be the process of staying in Germany or in the EU, actually working and um, living in the EU sort of long term. Uh, just as one example of our alumni, um, this is Alistair. He graduated in accounting and finance uh, last year. He now works for a local company called EEX which is um, an energy stock market exchange, uh, belongs to the German stock market. So very great company, very good employer to work for. He works there um, as a controller as, as much as I know. And all of our alumni uh, are now either working or studying. So we have four alumni studying a master's degree and we have um, nine alumni who are full-time employed, most of them in Leipzig actually, yeah. So this is a very positive story. It's very good that um, yeah, our students are very successful after graduation, either with post-graduate um, degrees or yeah, working already. So um, regarding our students, we have very common, re or I have very good common concerns or requests from them. And they always say, oh, I don't have much work experience or I don't speak German well. Can I find a job? Um, I don't have any experience. And there, aren't there, are there any jobs for me in Germany? And I am telling them, yes, you can, you can um, definitely, first of all, you will have studied at one of the best universities um, yeah, in, in the UK. So you get a UK degree at the end of your studies will really um, sets you apart from other graduates in Germany. Uh, you can work and, and yeah, do an internship, working student position during your studies that will definitely give you work experience and build your skill set for after graduation. Um, then the, the small classes we have and the lots of interaction we have with your classmates and also with your tutors and so on, it really will have built your, your um, soft skills, teamwork abilities, communication skills, intercultural skills. There's also within your academic um career, so to speak, you will also build a lot of skills that you can use later on in your job. You have is in high demand, definitely. Um, yeah, whether it's it's management or IT. So all of these positions need to be filled by um, very driven and and knowledgeable people like you. So yeah, the skill set is definitely in demand. Um, but again, if your plan is to stay and work in Germany, learning German is a huge advantage um, and will definitely, again, set you apart from other candidates. And there will be time for you to learn German during your studies here. So just to wrap up, so I'm at the end of my presentation now, yet um, studying here is still at, at your topmost um, priority during your time at LU Leipzig. So uh, working is great, but yeah, of course your academic um, performance is, is the priority. Get involved on campus, take part in extracurricular activities. Even if you can't find a job, try and volunteer or build skills elsewhere and get involved with your career planning early on. Because once you know why you, what you're gonna do, you can take specific steps to reach that goal uh, later on in your life. And yeah, German, German, German is the message we're pushing. This is what our experience in the last four and a half years has shown, um, that the students who learn German will definitely have a lot of open doors in Germany in terms of career. So um, this is my email address. If you have any questions, of course, you're welcome to reach out. 
And if you have any questions, um, you can also address them later on, I guess, if you are, or... <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, the students were typing a few questions in this question and answer section. Um, then, as far as I understood, we finished with the mm -hmm. presentation showing. And I'd like to, first of all, remind you who I am because I didn't start the recording uh, early enough. Uh, for those who are going to watch this webinar um, in a recorded way on YouTube, my name is Elvira Fritsch. I'm a student recruitment manager for Europe here. And I'm really happy to introduce a few of our, a few of our students who joined the webinar today. Um, I'm going to upgrade them to the panelists. Um, this is um, Anna Karina. Uh, yeah, she, Anna Karina comes from Venezuela. And uh, I know that Anna Karina luckily speaks German, so for her uh, it was a bit easier. Um, and Anna Karina uh, is our third year student now. She studies business management. Then I'm adding. Daniel Biro, um, yeah, correct, uh, coming from Romania. Daniel is also a third year student and he studies accounting and finance. And I'm also adding Daniel Zarankin. And this was not a student who I recruited, so I uh, do not know, unfortunately, the details. Maybe Daniel can um, introduce himself, of course, which uh, everyone would do. But Daniel is uh, something like an exception because usually uh, when the students approach me with their questions, they ask, uh, when uh, can I expect of getting an internship or finding an internship or a student job? And I usually would say from the second year when you are a bit uh, more informed, knowledgeable, and uh, more comfortable in Leipzig. But Daniel has joined us uh, for the foundation entry um, in computer science. And already as a foundation student, Daniel was able to find a student job. So I'm also very excited to hear his story. So dear students, if you could uh, kindly start your videos and um, tune on microphones um, and introduce yourself would be very happy. Uh, and in the meantime, I'm happy to answer the questions here. Uh, does the diploma mention that I studied in the Leipzig campus? Everybody, all students who study in Lancaster University Leipzig are going to receive Lancaster University graduation certificate. Only in your uh, transcripts where you see the details of your studies, uh, you are going to see in which campus you studied this or that module. For example, if you spent your also second year in the UK campus, uh, we will add a study abroad here, there. Uh, but the Graduation certificate itself comes from Lancaster University because we um, all our lectures are Lancaster University um, lectures or so staff members. Um, so all our academics, we um, are enrolling students based on Lancaster University entry requirements and we deliver all educational standards of Lancaster University. All our students have access to all software, to the library of Lancaster University and so on and so forth. How many people are there in the classes on average? Well, with the Groups of the university, we are going to have more students in the classroom when the uh, there is a lecture. However, during the seminars, uh, the groups will be split uh, maximum up to 20 students. So all your lecturers are going to know you by name. Um, it is very individual approach here, uh, and we are actually very proud of that. Um, we are not able to turn on our cameras as you give us uh, access. Oh, gosh, I'm so sorry. Uh, let me figure how to do that. Um, if uh, to do just one second, I'm sorry. Yeah, correct. Uh, make host, um, um, make a co host. Yes, uh, one second. Um, and Daniel, uh, make co host. Does it work now? Um, yeah, and Daniel, like a oh, sorry, 
<laughs> now it should work. Now you are able to turn your cameras. I'm happy I figured that. <laughs> okay, so Anna Karina, let's start with you. Could you also introduce yourself and maybe tell a short story how you got the job or the internship? Yes, sure. Hi, I'm Anna Karina Dastram. I come from Caracas, Venezuela, but I have double nationalities. I'm German Venezuelan. And I'm on my third year of business management. I am a student ambassador. I'm also the social community president, and I'm currently a working student in digital marketing in EX, which is an energy exchange trading. Um, so yeah, that's that's a bit of me. I started my work at EX um, nine months ago, and prior to that, I had a mini job, which is working 40 hours per month. And um, I was working at a resident accommodation prior to that. Thank you, Anna Karina. Uh, residence accommodation, by the way, it's uh, one of the most popular ones. Um, so by the way, if any student uh, who is attending this uh, webinar today or is watching in a, rec a recording, uh, you can approach Anna Karina or Daniel or any other of our student ambassador on our website and ask about the lifestyle of students here in Leipzig. So they are happy to reply to you. So Daniel, please, uh, could you please introduce yourself? Sure, thanks. Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Biro. I come from Romania and uh, I am currently in my third year of uh, accounting and finance here in Leipzig. Um, a bit about myself, um, yeah, as I said, I come from Romania, a really small town, so for me it was a bit of a change to, to move to Leipzig, which is a, a very big city in comparison, even though if you come from one of the, the big capitals of the world, you won't feel the same way as I felt. But still, it's a really nice city. Uh, uh, right Daniel, now, sorry. I... Oh, excuse me. Uh, I would like to ask you to maybe introduce your short story, how you got the internship, but you were going to do that. Sorry yeah, for yeah, the interruption. Exactly. Um, so right now, I am I am a working student at PwC here in Leipzig. Um, how I got this job? Uh, basically, Josephine introduced me to the, the partner in the Leipzig office. And I got job interview. I, I went there. I put on my charming face. And um, this is how I got the, the job. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm working in audit. Um, working student is basically like a part-time job that, that you can get here in Germany. You get a bit of a tax break with it. So it's very advantageous for, for everyone that wants to, to start working here. Um, Contrary to popular belief, you don't necessarily need German to land a position in the cor corporate world. It's definitely way easier. So I consider myself very lucky for landing this position without speaking German. And I would really advise everyone that like is moving to Germany and they're looking to live here for a longer period of time to actually put in the effort and learn the language because I for sure can tell you that I'm regretting not doing that in the three years I was here for. Thank you very much, Daniel. Well, uh, I also always say that uh, it definitely uh, improves your um, uh, like uh, job looking um, options. Yeah, so there will be many more perspectives if you speak German. As you said, it's not a necessity, it's not a requirement, but it definitely opens more doors. And okay, Daniel, uh, please introduce yourself. Your story uh, is for me personally very interesting and I would like to hear it as well for the first time, I believe. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Daniel, I'm from Russia, and I'm currently studying in on the foundation course in Lancaster University. Yeah, and uh, last week I've joined EX uh, company in Leipzig as a working student. And uh, yeah, I'm currently working here. What, what can I say? Well, uh, did you find this uh, vacancy on uh, one of our job fairs here, that the career fairs that um, Josephine so kindly arranged on campus? Yeah, I've attended a job fair, at, which was held at Lancaster University 
as far as I remember, in October in 2023 or in November, I don't remember exactly. Yeah, I have attended the job fair and uh, I tried during my winter holidays, I applied, uh, I've sent my CV mostly uh, to every company <laughs> from this job fair and uh, uh, but mostly the positions which uh, offered part-time work as I'm a student and uh, also uh, the positions which matched my uh, academic background uh, because I'm studying computer science. Yeah. And um, um, yeah. And two months later, uh, mostly uh, I got rejected, but still uh, two companies uh, invited me for the interview. Yeah. Well, that's indeed very unusual that a foundation year student was able to find a job offer. So uh, congratulations. Uh, could you tell me, please, and this will be the questions, question to everyone, actually, how well do you balance work and study? Uh, isn't it too overwhelming? As I told it, I've joined the company only last week, and now we have our semester holidays. <laughs> So, <laughs> really, you don't I know yet. Try yet. <laughs> yes, I don't know yet. But we'll soon see. there will be a summer holiday, so this will be even easier, right? Are you going to stay in Leipzig for over summer? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Well, you have a job now, right? Uh, what about you, Daniel? Uh, is it easy to um, balance studying in the last year when you need to make a uh, like final coursework and so on and uh working but you started working in earlier so i would say that i'm really really fortunate because i have a really understanding manager when it comes to my schedule and everything um basically they allow me to work a bit more during the times that uh, school is not as demanding and that kind of covers my, my hours for the periods when I have to focus on my studies. For example, the end of term period when you have assessments or tests, then I'm able to, to cut down on my hours during those couple of weeks because I have a bit of a buffer. Thank you very much, Daniel. And uh, what about you, Anna Karina? You've been working, I guess, since uh, the second year of your study or even earlier, right? Second year, exactly. It's the second year. Well, on my previous job, which is a mini job, it's, I would say, if you have never ever worked in your life and you want to have a good balance between your studies and work, it's one of the best ways to start just because it's only 40 hours per month. So you can start adapting yourself into this new work environment and then also along with your studies. Um, when I started working, I went from 40 hours per month to 20 hours per week. So double of hours per month, 80 hours per month at the end, uh, which was a bit of a challenge at the beginning as um, I have I can work a minimum hours of six hours per week, which is almost it's pretty good however I always decide to work with 20 hours per week which would be translated to three days of work and then I need to balance that out with studies which uh, sometimes it can be challenging when when you have a lot of presentations and exams and you have tests the good thing is that it's always important to have a good communication with your manager so that you can talk to them and tell them that maybe this week I cannot do as much as I usually do, uh, but they're usually super understanding. And as I said, as I can also, I have a minimum of six hours to work per week and I usually don't have any problem if I have to reduce my hours as um, yeah, six hours per week would be one day or you can divide it quite well with your studies as well. So yeah, it can be a bit of challenge, but you can do it as long as you organize. All right then. Um, well, Anna Karina and Daniel, I have a, um, a question to you too, actually. Are you planning to stay with these companies where you are currently employed in, or are you also considering maybe studies for uh, further studies post-grad? Okay, I start. Uh, so, the company X, unfortunately, don't offers you directly a job afterwards, uh, after you finish your studies. However, they do offer a lot of support finding other options or positions within the company. So it can be that I cannot get the same job that I'm doing right now, but I would 
probably be able to get a position at the company just in another department, for example. Um, however, I decided to pursue um, a master's degree. So that's why I decided not to um, continue with the company, but just because I would like to do a master's in the United Kingdom. So I won't be able to continue yeah. to work here. <laughs> well, that's very nice of them anyway, that they are offering this kind of support to their current student, uh, student employees. Yeah. Okay. Uh, great plans. Anna Karina, what about you, Daniel? So for me, um, due to the fact that the office here in Leipzig is not as big as uh, the offices in the bigger cities in Germany, uh, they don't really offer associate positions to the people that don't have uh, a really good understanding of the German tax code and the German language, which comes into play with the point of you should actually start learning German. Um, but uh, the company is really supportive if you're trying to uh, land an associate position in, in a different office where the, the language barrier is not as big. For example, in Munich or Berlin or Frankfurt, uh, there's lots of um, associates that actually don't speak German just because of the more international, br broader spectrum of the day-to-day the -day tasks. But uh, I... I, I like to keep my options open for the time being, but I would like to switch to a different field because auditing is interesting, but I, I would actually like to try something else, maybe in consulting, maybe in investment banking. Uh, but definitely the fact that I have had this position during my studies is, um, you know, a plus in my CV and the networking opportunities that I have. Is, is definitely a plus. Yeah, I cannot agree more. That's for sure. Um, Daniel, uh, so a question to you. You say you work just one week there um, with your holidays, with your um, yeah um, break in studies, but can you already estimate, so um, if your personal background and what you have been, you have studied by, uh, till this time um, can correlate to what you're actually doing? Um, or is it something very different uh, in this company? Or maybe you cannot really estimate for the first week yet? Yeah. Uh, I think that uh, I've recently joined uh, EX, but uh, I've already finding uh, the experience here in incredibly rewarding for me. And uh, in my opinion, this job matches uh, with the studies in the university, what I'm studying and uh, during my foundation year. And uh, the most important thing that I can put uh, the knowledge gained in the university into practice. So I can implement uh, the knowledge and the skills, uh, yes, uh, in practice. And uh, now I'm just immersing myself in the company <laughs> culture and <laughs> gaining, I'm just gaining a deeper understanding of what the company does and uh, especially my department. So uh, it's quite hard to say that uh, I've already implemented all the knowledge from the university, but uh, I try, I try, I try. And uh, of course inter it intersects because I'm working in the IT service management department and uh, the things we're studying in the uni, in the university, uh, yes, they are useful. Yeah, they are useful in my job. But you're going to study even more here, so the next three years, right? And it's, it's true. Uh, will it's be true. A, even yeah, more knowledge and skills. Thank you very much. Uh, Daniel, what about you? Everything that you've studied um, in your uh, previous courses for accounting and finance, uh, does it really meet uh, that work field that you are uh, doing at the moment or is something different? There's definitely a lot of overlap between what we studied and uh, what I'm doing in my job. Um, not to, to throw shade on anyone, but some of the topics that we're studying in class are a bit antiquated, I would say. But nevertheless, it is a good you know, foundation that they're setting. And then when you start your job, you 
you get the hands-on experience and you know everyone's saying that the best way of learning something is by actually doing it so for example we had an auditing course that set some like you know basic understanding of what i was going to do in my job and then as i got better at doing my job i started to see the resemblance between what we did in the class and what we, we were doing at work. Thank you, Daniel. Well, you got a perfect combination of uh, theory and practice and like well prepared Indeed. after Indeed. the graduation. And Karina, then uh, I will address this question to you as well. Um, how well uh, does your current job experience um, um, reflect of what you studied? And I think uh, with your reply, then maybe we wrap up this webinar. Yes, yeah, so um, during my work, I am working in something extremely specific. Uh, so once again, I'm studying business management and my work is digital marketing um, when I, where I manage website content. So it's a bit very specific in the field and business management tries to give you a big overview of every how a business work itself and get you into every department. So I would say that it complements what I'm looking into class, but it's not information that I have previously looked at because I believe that into what I'm working, it's something very specific where every company has a different way of working with it. However, um, I would say that the university has given me the skills and the tools to be able to achieve this job and also to um, do other jobs at the, at the company where I work at. For example, I also not only do digital marketing, but because of the tools that I have acquired, I also do other jobs within the marketing department that match more with what I have seen in class. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Well, obviously, we have many, many more students uh, from different uh, studying years who um, uh, undergo internships or have student jobs in the moment, but some of them uh, are working at the moment or are not here in Leipzig. And we are very honored, of course, uh, by your presence today, Anna, Karina, Daniel, and Daniel. Uh, thank you very much for um, joining us. And thank you, Josephine, for this wonderful webinar presentation. Um, well, uh, I believe we answered uh, all of the questions here. Um, there was one last question. Um, the average hours needed for studying per week when majoring in computer science. Well, um, this is actually relevant to all programs. So imagine the time you spend in the classroom. Um, exactly this amount of time or even more you need to spend on your own individual learning that's how it works usually with uh, university and especially with the uk education system um, yeah and uh, you should know that during your studies you are going to have an academic tutor your own academic tutor um, except your direct lectures maybe this will be someone from further modules and um, all our academic staff they're all always very approachable josephine is approachable student services and of course our marketing and recruitment team uh, so if you have any concerns or questions we are always happy to assist and help you uh, with any of your yeah questions all right. Sorry, Vera, maybe this is something the students could answer as well. Like <laughs> they they know um they are in the in the studying process. So I'm because I couldn't answer this question um directly. So I was wondering, you know, how much time would you say do you dedicate for studying during the week during term time? So um it is recommended that you spend somewhere from 25 to 35 hours per week on on studying uh, that includes all the lecture time the workshop time the seminars and uh, the individual study for sure um, but uh, not to give you a false sense of security if you just like you know for the first four or five weeks of the term don't really spend all that much time and just maybe do like 10 hours or something like that just you know doing some light revision over the material that you're doing in class. And then when exam time comes, you go into crunch time mode and you actually go through the material again and do all the seminars, you're probably gonna be fine. 
Yeah, I think it's it's about, I don't know in terms of hours, but like if you have your notes of every class and you're up to date with everything that's going on, then you don't need to study that much at the end, just more of like a summary of everything you have already learned in class. And as you're up to date, you just need to like, yeah, just do your own summary and your own learning. So it would depend into how you organize and if you rather do a bit every day or you know, during the weekend, uh, catch up of everything you saw during the week. So it's really personal. Well, also these students who joined us today, they're great with their time management. So you can take best example of them. Um, Daniel, would you like to add anything to this question? Yeah, I think that of course the uh, studies in the university are the priority for all the students. And uh, of course, if you say uh, for your um, team lead in the company that you don't have enough time uh, to study, for, first of all, as a student, you can work 20, up to 20 hours a week. Yeah, it's a half, half time job. Uh, so uh, up to 20 hours, it means you can work 14, 15, 13, it is convenient for you. Uh, but uh, if you have uh, problems with uh, studying, of course, it is uh, much more important to solve them because uh, it is the priority and it is the first thing uh, that uh, goes for you as a student. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that team leads are very loyal in these companies and <laughs> they know that you are the students and uh, they won't uh, tell you to work overtime. That's what I think. Yeah, thank you. All right then. Thank you very much again for your time. Now I guess all the questions were answered and if anybody has um, anything left, please feel free to reach out to us also on info at lancasterlatish.de and we'll be happy to reply to you. Have a great day, everybody, and see you soon.